Hello everyone, this is Alejandro and in this tutorial we will see how to create a Polaroid Go camera. As you can see, this is a fully interactive experience and you can even click on the buttons. But for the focus of this tutorial, we will only be doing the modeling part. That means creating the entire camera from scratch. All right, let's see how we can build this. The first step is to have reference images in the front and the size of the camera so we, you don't need to guess about the volume and you can use them to shape your geometry. So I'm using a cube and then I'm adding subdivisions to the cubes to match the shape a little bit. So each subdivision adds more sharpening to the volume. So now I'm just adjusting the vertices so we can match the profile on the side. So I'm adding like subdivisions using the lookup tool. And now I'm just adjusting the points on the back side so we can match the profile. The main idea here is that we can have the general volume of this shape uh, starting from this cube. So I'm adding more and more subdivisions and with each subdivision we get more details. So sometimes I switch between the normal selection tool and the paint selection tool, clicking on the settings button on top on the toolbar. So here I'm just adjusting the curvature of the silhouette and again just refining uh, the points so we can get the final shape. I noticed that on the front side of the camera, I need to also adjust the curvature. So now what I do is that I constantly select the points and then I use the scaling tool so that that way I can, I can scale symmetrically as I can do it right now here. It's an easier way of doing the change in both sides. So at this point, I realized that I have actually most of the volume of this shape ready. So now I'm gonna start adding more details. So I want to have like a good topology for this shape, which means the loops to flow in a way in which they can allow me to add more details in the future. So if you're coming from a 2D background, this is very similar of when you're tracing a vector shape, you want to have the least amount of points, but you also want to have points uh, that can enable you to have the curvatures that you're looking for. So in here, I'm just trying to replicate the bevel on the front of the camera. So I'm using the inner extrusion tool. So I selected the polygons and then I extrude to the inside. And now I move the vertices on the, on the border to the back so I can start adding this little angle that is on the camera. This is actually a quite complex model and it requires a lot of adjustments to get the curvature right because you need to see this shape from each of the views. So I'm also constantly switching between different materials so I can see the surface in different ways. This is very helpful because you can see how the surface looks and it can help you to identify different artifacts. So I continue to adjust the shape to match the profile of this camera because I feel like this front face part is like the most complex part. There's like a curvature in the picture so I want to make sure that both the bevel and the general volumes are following this curvature. One trick that you can use is that if you double click on an edge loop, you can actually select all of the continuous edge in that loop. Another trick that you can use is that you can choose to select all the points that are in front and also in the back. This is very helpful, especially in this case when I'm editing the points on the side. I want to select both the front facing points and also the back facing points. This way I don't need to do the work twice. But you need to be careful when you're doing this from the front of the camera because you might be selecting points that are in the back side of the camera, which is not ideal. I realized that I need to have more work on the back. A good strategy is always to maintain a uniform spacing between the points, especially when they are on the corner. This way you can make sure that the corner has the same round corner across the surface. So here I continue to refine the front face and I feel like I'm getting close to the final solution. By the way, if you don't know, this way of modeling is called a box modeling. It's called it like that because you start from a cube. So I added more detail on the bevel. So you can see that I just added a couple of edge loops and now the bevel looks more sharper. And I'm just adding more edge loops on the bottom part so I can control better the curvature of this shape. I just wanted to have like a better surface there. 
So now I need to make more adjustments from different sizes. So I feel like now I'm ready to start adding more details in the front, which means creating the holes for the different lenses, right? So we have like two squarish type of holes. So I, I added like a couple of loops so we can work on the topology for this. Here what I'm doing is that I'm selecting uh, several points and then I scaling down to zero so this way they can look um, like a line. Now I'm selecting the polygons and then I'm extruding to the inner and then I'm extruding to the back. This way I can create this little hole. So here I'm just adjusting the points. So I'm just moving around the points and making it closer and uniform because I want the corners to be equal on all of the four sides. So I'm just moving the points in a way that they match the curvature. So I set the points in both sides and then I use a scale tool so I can use symmetrical scaling so they both work and look in the same way. So I added another edge loop right on the border of these holes to make it sharper. You can see it's actually getting closer already, but the size of the and the shape of the holes are not quite right. So I decided to create some rectangles with some round corners that can help me to actually shape this model in the right way. So I'm putting the reference right there so I can then use that to move my points. Basically I'm just making like a contrast shape and then based on the contrast I, I will be able to adjust the polygons and vertices and edges to match the roundness of the square. Now I'm adjusting a little bit of the back side because I realized I never look at the shape from this side. I also have like other reference images of the camera that are not just from the front or from the sides and those are just images that can help me to see how the camera looks in you know a real life scenario. That's always, always helpful because sometimes it's really hard to tell like how the shape is just by this kind of picture so it's always good to have a bunch of reference to kind of like help you to figure out what's the shape of the camera in this case. Um, especially if the object is, on, is an object you never have or you never kind of like uh, saw in real lives it's always good to have the biggest amount of reference i never use this camera so i don't really know how it feels so i need to do it based on the images now i'm working on the viewfind it's just a cube that i extruded and then i added like more edge loops so i can control how round it looks on the side and i'm just trying to replicate the shape so I'm just moving it around there until it looks like it match the surface so i realized that now i need to work on adding the circle and this is gonna be a tricky part because the circle touches the curvature of the front side. Here I decided to use a natural vector circles as a reference for how it's gonna be on the model. So I'm just adjusting here the points to match the silhouette of the circle. So I added another extrusion and in this extrusion is to help me to figure out the right like silhouette for this. But I need to move it a little to the back because otherwise it will look like a little bump there. So I'm just manually adjusting everything and just moving the points and you can start seeing that it's getting closer to how it should be but there is a lot of work to do still. I noticed that I needed more edge loops in order to create the right circle. Once I have more points, I can easily start like building the shape properly. So I'm just moving around the points until I get the final shape.
So once the circle is ready, I make some extrusions to create some sharp corners. And right after that, I'm gonna add more depth so we can insert the lenses in the future. I decided to switch to um, white color so it matches closely the actual camera. And now I'm working on the viewfinder and adding more edge loops and making it more round so it looks a lot more like the actual camera. I realized that in the actual camera, the viewfinder is kind of like merging into the corner of the camera. So this is a very peculiar shape. I'm adjusting the camera to see better the surface and I'm like moving it very subtle um, until I find the, the right balance so they look like they're meeting together. So it's almost quite there, it's just a little bit more adjustments and you can see that it's starting to disappear. So I decided to start working now on the middle lens. I decided to start from a cylinder and then I start adding like more inner extrusions and on each extrusions I pull the, the polygons to the back so it looks like a stair and right when I got to the middle then uh, I just need to adjust the scale so it can match properly in the area. So actually I noticed that I needed to make like some final adjustments in the in the polygons itself so the circle looks better. Yeah, now it looks uh, very close to it, but there is uh, still some adjustments that need to be done here on the rainbow. By the way, this rainbow is made by just uh, copying or uh, duplicating the model and leaving only this top part of the polygons and then I added like extrusion. The rainbow itself is just a gradient with multiple steps from one side to another. All right, so now that the, the steps bar are ready, I'm just adding a sphere to simulate the lenses. And I'm going back to the white color so I can see something closer to the final result. So I'm adding a little bit more details here on the whole of the camera. By the way, this whole of the camera was done very much in the same way in which I did the holes for the lenses in the top. Now I'm adding a little gradient here to add the details on the connection of the two parts of the camera. So the initial connection is just like an inner extrusion and then, I, then I'm adding just this little shadow to make it look more realistic. Now I'm adding the connector on the side. So this is very, a very simple rectangle with round corners in a dark material. So the connector has like a LED which is in green and it also have like a USB connector. So I'm just duplicating the same rectangle and adding a different type of shading there. And at the end I decided to use like a flat shade for the for the LED itself so it's not that noticeable. And now I'm working on adding like shadows on the bottom of this object. So I create like a, um, a depth gradient or a 3D gradient. Now the complex part will be to make the actual lenses. So the first thing will be to make the holes more deeper. I duplicated the middle lens, so then I can use the same idea on the right lens. I thought this was going to be a good idea, but it actually was not so good because I ended up doing more work. I started from there and then I started adjusting the shapes so it looks a lot more like in the reference. This lens is actually quite complex because it requires a combination of different structures. So the front side, it needs to be a little squarish in the inner part. So I'm trying to adjust the, the polygons in a way that is a little squareish. Right after that I selected the border and then I added some extrusion to add like this little depth that we need. So now I'm adding a little gradient on the sphere that is on this lens to simulate the reflection on the ground. So I'm following the image reference on the back to do this. 
it's just a, a white to black gradient and it's just a little sharp and then i do this applicating the same material to the to the middle lens so they look similar and really not trying to replicate the exact detail of how this look in the reference this is just a, a simplification of it i think that's good enough for the purpose of this model so I'm adding a little gradient into the material because I feel like it, that way it looks a little more realistic. Now finally, I started working on, on the other square and basically this is going to be the flashlight. So the flashlight is quite complex because it has like a bunch of detail. You can see that the flashlight implies that. So I'm creating like a rectangle here and then I just using the only the bottom part of the rectangle to create like some details so i'm adjusting the polygons in a way that i can have the same round corners and right after that i started like molding the shape so they it follows like the top part so for the lines i decided to use a rectangle and then i use a cloner tool to replicate the lines And then for the little dots, I'm using just circles that are positioning in there. So I duplicated the entire camera and then I only leave these borders because I, I realized that the camera needed some sort of border right there inside this, the hole. So um, now I'm just adjusting the polygons a little bit and the size so it match the border. This, is, this is, will require like some iteration until we actually find the right uh, balance there for the shape. So you can see here I'm just adjusting the points again so we can have the chart corner of this border. Later on, um, I actually find a better way to do this and sometimes you're not quite sure what's the right approach if you never did something like this or you never found like a reference. So this was my first time making this camera. So I make a few mistakes in the process and then I realized I could make it like uh, better. So hopefully when you make yours, you will not make those mistakes. I hope. You can see here, I'm just using a plane instead of duplicating the entire object. And now I'm just simplifying a little to match the round corners. Um, so instead of making like a border in the other side, I'm just selecting now the polygons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, an inner extrusion. This happens to be a lot more faster and the result is the same. So I have more control over the final outcome. So you can see in a couple of steps, I already figured out um, a border for this. Now I just need to adjust the corners to match the shape as well. So right, it seems like we're almost ready with this, but there are like a few issues here because I have a bunch of objects close there and just need to adjust. Some final adjustments in the materials and we are ready.